All right, so I've opened up this site, defont.com. I already kind of know the character I want from my type. It's mostly all in capitals. I was going to play with having a lowercase i, maybe. I want an ampersand. When I look for letterpress, I only get these three. So this is honestly what I end up doing because tags are, are limited, right? People don't always know how to tag their designs. And this includes professional designs and amateur designs. So I'll usually honestly just start at the A's and start scrolling down. Now this is why it's important to already have sketched your vision, right? Otherwise you can get seduced and say, oh, I really like the graffiti dripping marker one. And honestly, this one looks pretty cool a font for the computer people. So once I like one, this is what I do. I hit Command Shift 4, because you're going to like a lot of them. And I do a screen grab of it. And then I collect all the screen grabs I like. And I very seldom even get out of the A's. So there's a ton of typefaces out there, right? They're adding more all the time. But by seeing a lot, you'll have a, a good instinct. And then I'll create an email for myself. Here we go. Where I include all those different screen grabs. The screen grabs take up almost no memory, right? And what's great about all these different screen grabs is they tell me, I'll zoom in here on my email. They'll tell me the actual name of that typeface from Defont. So I just finished sketching. I have ones that are very brushy. I have ones that are very clean. I have ones that are look hand done, but are kind of clean. So this one actually looks pretty promising for this because it's something I'm going to modify. But do you see how the T is similar to the T? The A is similar to the A, the B is similar, right? And then there are others and others and others and lots and lots. And some of these are really cool. Like I love the, the little circles in there, but I think with this blocking, um, that wouldn't become a, a repetitive motif that's as, as effective. This one's really interesting, but I'm gonna go for the A for A. That's just what I'm feeling right now. So A for A. So I go back to Defont, and now I know what I want to download. Because you don't want to just download 50 fonts. It just takes a lot of time. So you, you are targeted. So instead, I'm going to go for search, and I'm going to say A for A. And that gives me the A for A. And then I say download. Now this is what's great about Defont. You can even be on a library computer. You do not need administrative privileges in order to install a typeface on a Mac. And I, I honestly, I don't think you do for a PC, but I don't have as much experience. So when I hit download, I go to my downloads folder, and the last thing that came in, if I open it in Finder, is a little, come on, and there it is, a little folder that says A for A. I double click to unzip that compressed folder in downloads. And this is the most basic thing you'll get, a TTF file or an OTF file. And then all you do is double click on it and it will open up on a Mac in what's called the font book. See font book here. And then you say, install the font. And then it will show you your font book, which for a digital artist gets larger and larger. Uh-oh, it says three serious errors were found. Do not use these fonts. Let's try it anyway. Install check. And then it should show up in your font book. There we go. A for A. Ah, sure enough. Okay. So here's the problem with free resources. This is why you might need alternatives. Usually they work great. All of these work great. That one doesn't. All right, so what else might I go? Well, I'll go back to my email, the, the different ones I found, 
And something that's really close is a love of thunder. So I'm going to look for that. So a love of thunder. And you can see it has a little bit of open paper texture already embedded in the typeface design. I'm going to download that. Do, 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 do. I'm going to go to downloads. I'm going to open it up. Unzip the, the file for a love of thunder. And now this is what usually happens. You'll get a whole folder, and that folder will contain the, the TTF file, the OTF file. And if it has a readme text file, you should look at it. That gives the license information, right? It's basically their creative commons. And this one says everything on Defont is free for personal use, but doesn't always mean it's free for commercial use. So it's copyrighted 2009. It's freeware for private non-commercial use, right? So you can buy an organizational license from him at John Cumberland Games, on and on, right? And that's why people offer up their typefaces. <coughs> so I'm using it as a demo, it's personal use, but I'm also gonna modify it heavily. So just like when you're using other people's pixels, you want to transform your type. You just don't want to use it as designed. So now I double click on the TTF and then I install the font and I hopefully don't get so many errors. It's called a love of thunder, something like that. There it is. And it looks like it came in beautifully. But notice what's missing from this. No special characters, no ampersand. Oh, but here it has one. So maybe there is an ampersand in it. All right, so very good. What can I do next? I'm going to take my sketch that I saved to the desktop and I'm going to open it in Illustrator. I like to do all of my actual type design in Illustrator to keep it as a vector. Because these typefaces that we just downloaded, those are vectors. And I can close Photoshop for the time being and open up Illustrator. All right, very good. So now we've played with Illustrator enough to kind of know how this works. I'm not going to live trace this, but if I were, I would just click on it and I would use the live trace options, right? But it wouldn't be a good idea for me to live trace my Photoshop scroll because I didn't clean it up very much, right? But if you wanted to do some hand type in Photoshop and then bring it in a live trace as a black and white logo and then ignore the white, feel free. Instead, what I'm gonna do is lock or double click on this, dim the image to 50% as an onion skin and then lock it, make a new layer on top. And now I'm actually gonna use the type tool. And it works the same way in Photoshop as an Illustrator, but in Illustrator, it will keep it. I can trace it as vectors. And now in that type tool, I'm just going to click on the T and I'm going to type in my text. And you can see the settings for it, just like a word processor. I'm going to make the point size way larger so I can see it. And instead of Myriad Pro, what do I want? I want a love of thunder. I can even just type it in. And it will show up. Now this is what's called Latin text. I can now type in my own. So, absurdity and association. Right. I can try a hitting return and kind of spacing them. Right. Just like a word processor, I can use my arrow keys and I can select and I can center them, right? But obviously this is very different than what I've designed. So this is what I wanted to show you. How can you modify type in Illustrator? And these are things you can't do as easily in Photoshop. The first thing I can do is this is on a type tool still. Uh, so if you look, it's all in one path. 
because it's still edit editable type. They're not separate vectors yet, but there are so certain advantages to it being edit editable type. <laughs> so what I can do is of course, grow it so that it's the same width as my, my sketch. And even though it's editable type, I can actually stretch it using the large selection tool. And that's working pretty well. And because it's a type layer still, I can actually add in space between. And I can select it. And I can shrink it down. This is called letting the space between lines of type. And so now I have one, one example, and that's closer, right? But it's definitely not what I wanted because this type is always going to be on a clean horizontal. So this is my favorite thing. I'm going to create a new layer. But before I do that, I am going to select everything well, I'm actually just going to select absurdity and hit Command C, copy that onto the clipboard. Then I'm going to turn off that layer, lock it, turn it off, make a new layer, and I'm going to draw with my pencil tool, a good old pencil tool. I'm going to draw a path. Looks like that. See it in green, a little empty path. And then I'm going to go to the T, and instead of using the regular type tool, I'm going to say the type on path tool. Then I'm going to click on that path, and then I'm going to paste in my, my letters, right? And you can see how it starts to pivot them and make them funky. And sometimes this is what you want. And what's great about type tools in Photoshop and in Illustrator, as long as I'm still on a type tool, I can select everything. And if I hold down Option and I use my left and right arrow keys, I can control what's called the kerning the spacing in between the letters, right? Because some places I want it closer, like in here, but then between the A and the B, I want it wider. And so another way you can control the kerning is by actually adding a space and then holding down Option. Or between these two, I want these closer. So I'm gonna close up that kerning. So that is type on a path, and that's getting me even closer, except that there's something I don't like about it. Because my design is for it to fill a rectangle, and my type on a path is going off in all these different directions. Right? So what's another option I have? Well, I can just go to my regular type, and I'm going to make a copy of all of it onto a new layer. Creative problem solving for each of your different ideas. And then I'm going to edit and paste it in place. And now I need to start editing each individual vector, not treat it as something editable as all together as type. So what do I do? I right click on it and I say create outlines. And now all of these are just individual filled paths. So in this layer, now you can see everything, the ampersand, everything as one individual path that I can select. So let's start. And if I'm really paranoid, which I usually am in Illustrator, I'll copy all of that. I'll lock it. I'll turn it off. I'll make a new layer, and I'll paste it before I start modifying it. So edit, paste in place. But basically, what do I do? Now I'm going to turn off everything except the A. And now I'm going to edit the A. And I'm going to use the small selection tool. And I'm going to start uh, maybe with the lasso, and I'm going to start stretching it. I can use the large selection tool and just kind of stretch it bigger. I'm, I can uh, use the pencil tool and add to it, but my favorite thing is to just use the lasso tool and kind of take a chunk of it and then use the small selection tool and drag that chunk into different areas. right? 
So now I'm playing with the vector. 